is Robert asked, and this is another um, sort of email thing that I got. Um, uh, I have both a manual and auto tuner, but if only one had money, if, if only one person had money for one right now, um, should I buy a manual tuner or, or, or an auto tuner? What would you recommend? Hmm. So and that's a really good question. That's a really good question. He's getting and he's, he's actually purchasing an FT891 uh, from an estate sale. So he's not going to have a built in tuner. Uh, and actually, I don't, you know, even if, you're, even if your rig has a built-in tuner, I still recommend purchasing a wide-range uh, tuner, of, external tuner of some sort, because, you know, your built-in tuners are only good for three to one or so. So you really want to get, you know, if you're, if you're going to work with some of these more esoteric antenna types, you're going to need an external tuner for that. It's definitely uh, wide-range, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I think... If you've only got money for one, I would gonna, I would spend it on a manual tuner, and this hmm. is why. Uh, manual tuner is going to give you more range, uh, more flexibility. Uh, once you, you, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve with manual tuners, uh, but once you work, once you, you know, you spend a little bit of time with them and figure them out, you're actually, you're gonna, you're, you know, because you can, you can sort of preset you know what your what your tune spots are you can you can get to those spots quicker and and retune faster for the most part than you can you know with a with an auto tuner um or at least just as fast um that's true so. <clears throat> i think i i own both and i actually sold my one of those large roller inductor tuners yep. it's been sitting for years i'm like i'm never gonna use that i got rid of it and all of a sudden i needed it isn't that how it works <laughs> but those little especially for camping i use a little mfj manual tuner mm -hmm. i forget the number like a 914 something like that yeah I'm yeah not sure and then ldg the automatic tuner i use that one for my uh, ts480 and there's i think there's something to be said for having to learn how to change the tuner the manual tuner so you can learn how to do the knobs and what it does for your intent so that you can kind yep. of understand what's going on. And then later, when you're better at it and you're sipping your adult beverage in your camper, you just hit the button. <laughs> but that comes later on down the road. Yeah, and that's, I, that's, that's exactly what I've done. You know, when I first got my HF, I got a manual tuner with it. And um, I used that manual tuner for close to 15 years. And then I upgraded to an automatic tuner uh, for the shack radio. And I took a manual, you know, I, I think I had the nine, oh, one of the MFJ 949 tuners, which is a beautiful, beautiful manual tuner. Uh, and then I also had the uh, 945, I think I call it their mobile tuner. And that's the one I would take portable with me. That was another manual tuner. Uh, but that one got a little bit wonky. So I finally replaced it with an auto tuner. But I still use it. And like I said, you know, if I build that doublet antenna, I'm going to have to pull out the manual tuner. Because my auto tuners do not take open open feed line, so that's crazy. Well, you know what? The, yeah. the best thing to start with is start with an antenna that you don't need a tuner for. There you go. Right, and there enjoy some of that that freedom. Yep, exactly. And there's there's plenty. You know, there's you know if you're getting in, you know, in in the shack, you can you know you there's a, plenty of antennas that you can kind of dial in that you don't need some you don't need a tuner for. The classic N, you know, N fed half wave antenna. A lot of times, you can get by without a tuner, um, and and whatnot. So it's, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, but if you're gonna get, yeah, if you're gonna get a tuner, uh, like I said, the manual, you know, go manual first, and then once you once you experience, you know, you gain that experience, that knowledge on what what tuners are doing, and we're not e we're not even gonna get into. Tuners aren't tuning your antennas. No, 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 we're not. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. And if I see any comments on that, I'm just just gonna I'm just gonna ignore them because we're. <laughs> oh, I need to comment. <laughs> <laughs> because we've been there. <laughs> yes, we know good. that. We know that. So, <laughs> so, all right. Um, and then get the, yeah, and then and then go you know and go the auto tuner route for the convenience. And I, I think a lot of people a lot of people said the same thing. So uh, uh, yeah, auto is quicker. Manual, no batteries. Um, the Cat three hundred, I think it's the Mat uh, Mat three hundred. I think is 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 the one that's the, or no Cat three hundred manual tuner, Comet Cat three hundred manual tuner. I'll have to check that one out. Hmm. So. 
You know, when you uh, use a tuner that's powered by batteries, you can sometimes get RF on the power line. And so then you have to mm -hmm. put, it just goes on and on, right? It just never ends the fun you can have with troubleshooting. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and Kevin's right. Antennas that aren't resonant don't need a tuner. So there you go. Yeah. If your antenna requires a tuner, get a different antenna. So, well, some of us like multi-band antennas and uh, the convenience that a multi-band antenna gives us, especially working out of the home out of oh, the yeah. home shack, yeah. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.